And we are back. Appreciate you, Brian Broaddus, for being here. Appreciate y'all for tapping in. Love y'all coming through. Uh, we got real football this week. You know what I mean? We have week one. We got some Thursday, some Friday. Don't we have a Saturday game or something like that? I know it's college ball Saturday. I think it's Saturday game. college ball. Yeah, yeah, the NFL. The NFL is doing their best to try and not interfere with college ball. Yeah, but they're going to interfere with college ball. Like next year, they're talking about moving so they can get the eighteen games. Yeah, they're talking about moving the schedule up, and usually, usually Labor Day weekends reserved for college football. Yeah. NFL is like thinking, uh, yeah, we've done this for a long time and we're about to have an 18 game schedule and uh, we need this weekend. So, yeah, they've tried to avoid it, but uh, I don't think they're going to be able to. Not going to be able to do it, Brian. Brooks, no, but, man, not at all. Not at all. But we're going to be figuring it out, man. I, I've been kind of stretching the the uh, content out this week, Brian. I've been trying to uh, get get used to the idea that the Lombardas We're Doing All Right podcast is going to yeah. be more than one day a week. So uh, we're going to be doing the Browns defense cowboys offense today um basically browns, browns offense offense pardon me browns offense cowboys yeah. we'll defense do that today. tomorrow yeah this yeah i i, I know uh i kind of this is how i work i always mm -hmm. work with the opponent's offense first and so i was i, I just yeah, but i i have seen some browns defensive tape i like get into that tomorrow but go cool. perfect this thing's going to come down to a couple of different things mm -hmm. for me and I want to get your take real quick. It doesn't have to be quick because I give long ass answers that everybody like loses their minds on. I'm giving. Uh, what are you expecting from Deshaun Watson? Not, I say in this football game, yeah, but really for the whole season. I, you know, the injuries have been a problem. Lack of accuracy has been a problem. Yeah. At one time, this dude was a pretty, pretty solid quarterback. When you start talking about who would you rather have, you know, they're both him and Dak kind of similar in the number of years mm -hmm. they've been in the league. Dak's just become a better player. Yeah. But I, I just wonder where are you on Deshaun Watson right now at Cleveland? I wonder, and we'll talk about the Eagles guy when we get there. We ain't got to jump. Sure. On him. But sure. I wonder, you know, like how much weight some of these play callers carry or how much some yeah. of the way some of these offensive guys can carry. And I know we can look and point and laugh and be like, Oh, that was Bill O'Brien. Yeah. But man, Bill O'Brien can call some offense. We've seen some yeah. Bill. We've seen Bill O'Brien call some offense, right? It's just that yeah. when things go bad, we point the finger. Like if the Vikings yeah. lose Zimmer's a bad coach, but if he's just the DC, he's a phenomenal. Right. Right. Um, Deshaun Watson had a really good run in Houston. He had a couple of mm -hmm. really, really good seasons, but uh, it seems mm -hmm. like since he got into his trouble, not even his trouble, since he just had mm -hmm. issues with Houston, um, he just hasn't been the same dude. Now, it could be confidence, but I like to blame it on once you lose that dude that makes scheme really easy for you, mm -hmm. you look different. And we're going to be having the same conversation about the dude in Philly because his guy went to Indy. And I bet you Richardson is going to be looking fantastic because play callers matter here jordan love can look a certain kind of way his whole life but matt uh le, le, Fleur, le, Fleur, matt le, Fleur. le Fleur. he you know it's, it's something about those dudes brock purdy he it's just something about those dudes that when they work within the system and it's all good it's all good but if mm -hmm. anything changes if anything out of that thing changes, it gets a little weird. And Deshaun Watson, he only played like seven or so games last year, Brian. Yeah, but he got yeah. sacked a bunch. He yeah. he held the ball a bunch. He and did. it's not because his offensive line was bad. He'd be missing reads and running around, yeah. Brian Broaddus. And he'll run into some sack trouble for you. Um, and the news just came out. I was looking on the social uh Jedrick Wills, who I thought was he was Jedrick was gonna get whooped anyway, but he's yeah. not playing. So now you got a backup, James Hudson. He was from Cincinnati, yeah. if you remember him. Um, right. the University of Cincinnati, not a Bengal. Um, right. So he's he's going to be out there. I mean, that'll be good there. But just I think any kind of pass rush, any kind of muddy look, anything that can waver his confidence or whatever, if it's not available for him to run and you make him throw the football, I think you can have a field day if they choose to ever stop running. Um, so I anticipate a bunch of spying going on. I anticipate a bunch of contain. If anything, Zimmer may be like, hey, guys, I ain't telling you to slow down your pass rush, but just have gap integrity and just let this man stay in, you know, stay in place and let him throw from the pocket, and we'll probably kick his ass all day, and he'll let you sack him. Yeah, I tell you what, I really like what you did because I think he got an understanding of what this guy is. Yeah. and. Um, he's not an accurate quarterback throwing the football. 
You know, when you look at him under pressure, the games that he did play, you know, he had the fourth lowest completion percentage in the National Football League last year. Games played, he's at 45% when pressured. This guy, he doesn't, I don't think he, it's funny because today when I was talking about him on the radio, there were people that were saying, damn, sounds like we're playing Trey Lance. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so that's who we're playing today. And, you know, uh, I, I think that, I think Deshaun Watson should be further along than he is right now. Mm -hmm. And he's dealt with the off the field stuff. I think that's taken a lot out of him. I think the injuries have taken a lot out of him. I think Bill O'Brien, to your point, made it pretty simple for him to play football. And I have a feeling that that as as uh, the Browns go along and, you know, Kevin Stefanik, he, he, I think that he's going to find a way to have to make it easier on Deshaun Watson to play football. And so with this game in particular, and you mentioned the offensive line, they've got problems at both offensive tackle spots. You know, and, and Jack Conklin was a guy that's coming off an injury. You mentioned Wilson, what he's had to deal with, you know, him not playing. They they are they are in a little bit of a bind at the offensive tackle spot in this game. And I think it affects the way that the quarterback plays. But I, you know, Bosh, when I watched these games, when I was breaking down these games, I I kind of felt like that 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 the Browns have some issues inside too. Mm. at center and guard. Yeah. And I think Posick, the center, I don't particularly think that he's a very powerful guy. LSU? Yep. I don't feel like that Teller, Wyatt Teller, mm -hmm. the right guard's particularly good. You know, there, there, there's some issues with this offensive line. And now you have a quarterback who, who hasn't, uh, you know, he's taken practice snaps and things like that. You know, game action, not a lot, if any. Um uh, an offensive line, they don't, they really can't lean on a running game. I think the back forward is a pretty good player for them. I think he's a tough runner, but you know, it, it ain't Chubb. No, and they're going to have to. If Dallas can turn this into a game where they put it into Sean Watson's lap, the Browns could be in trouble. Sure, you know, because the accuracy. Now, I'll say this: I do, I do like me some Amari Cooper. Hell yeah. I and and I think there's there's ways that that the Brown coaching staff, I think the loss of uh, Bill Callahan, who I always call running game Moses, I think that's a big thing for them. Yeah, new offensive corner, but you know Kevin Stefanski, he's he's going to call the plays. Uh, so I I'm kind of in that mode right now where I think that you're going to see an offense that is a little bit handicapped right now with the unknown about their quarterback and his health, the unknown or really what's going on at tackle, uh, the lack of, of potentially of a running game here. They're going to, they're going to be under stress. I don't think Mike Zimmer is going to make this easy for him at all. Right. I don't think he's going to make it easy for this. You know, he, he has an understanding of this head coach and how he is as a play caller. They were together. So he understands, he knows the guy. Uh, you know, he knows where to attack. You can watch the tape and kind of see where to attack. But I, I circle back now to Amari Cooper. I kind of feel like that when you look at Amari Cooper, he could be a problem for you in this game. You know, he, he his ability to play out of the slot, the route running, they can match him up. You know, Jordan Lewis has to be on the screws. He has to be ready to play in this game. Mm -hmm. You know, how fast do they try and find ways to take advantage of Carson in his first start? You know, I think they're going to move the pocket. I think they're going to use Njoku. Uh, their, their, tight, their screen game is a good way of moving the football for them. Anything to kind of get the ball out of his hands. Uh, the pressure, you know, we talked about that. The accuracy is a problem. But when he can run, this guy could be a weapon throwing the – I mean – running the football yeah. as a goal right. You know, we used to deal with – you always have to deal with these guys. You know, Lamar Jackson's coming up here in a few weeks. You used to deal with Russell Wilson running, moving, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, you deal with Hurts, you know, his his mobility in the pocket. Watson to me is if, you, if you're not sure – if you're not sure with your tackling, if you just kind of like come up weak and try and tackle – this guy, he'll, you'll bounce off him yeah. and he'll keep running. 
I, I think that's the one thing that could kill Dallas in this game is they get pressure, they have opportunities for sacks, and they don't complete the sacks. They don't get the guy on the ground, and then he's able to make a loose play, a big play mm -hmm. that way. But I could see screens, the waggles, the boots, anything to try and make him feel more comfortable throwing the football. And that's that's really where if Dallas is going to lose this game, they they let the Browns be balanced. They let them run the football with Ford. They don't get off the ball. They don't tackle well. You know, the linebackers have trouble. You know, if that's the case, make this guy have to beat you throwing the football. Because mm -hmm. he that that's where his problems are. Yeah. Throwing the football. When he was when he was playing, Brian, I'm just gonna play some of him getting getting, you know, sat because I'm a hater. Yeah. Um, I feel like when he was in the game, right? It was mm -hmm. almost like they would use the run game to kind of bail him out a little bit. It's right. like the the Browns offense, and it sounds kind of weird, but it's almost like the one thing that helped them out the most was like slowing down a little bit. That's why yeah. when Joe got there, you know what I'm saying? Joe, yeah. he, he, you know, Flacco was just kind of, all right, I'm not going to do nothing to put us in danger. I'm mm -hmm. not going to be hero ball guy. I'm not mm -hmm. going to take unnecessary risk and things like that. I'll just go punt and let this great defense play great defense, go back out there and run the football and just right. you know and just live to play another down or whatever but it 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 it, it just did seem like when i was watching um watson there that he did just have a little bit of hero ball to him his yeah. i'm gonna try to escape and i'm going to attempt to run around and move around and he'll you know mm -hmm. fall into a negative play he'll fall into yeah. a sack and all this kind of stuff brian and yeah. you know without chubb i feel like now it now it goes into the cliche football turns right hey stop yeah. the run you really get to go get to go party now and i think that's that's something that's that's going to be super important ford can run he can run. And he can. And honestly, I feel like Ford, if you don't deal with him, he can embarrass you. But to your point yeah. and everybody's point, Will Steele's point, everybody's point, he's not Chubb. He's not going to kick your ass no. by himself. Yeah. yeah. This this has – this could have the vibe. And I don't think they the, – the Browns, they do have some guys. I think they have some guys that when you watch them play in space and block in space – in the running game especially, I think there was some creativity with the way that they ran the ball. I think they want to spread you out and run the ball that way. This game has a little bit of that Arizona Cardinal vibe to it. Yeah. It has that kind of vibe where you have a quarterback with Dobbs, Joshua Dobbs, didn't throw the ball particularly well, but what happens? You Run don't around. handle the running game. He runs around. He makes plays with his feet. You don't handle their receivers all that well. You allow the you know, you don't fill in the alley, you don't play the edge well, and then all of a sudden you're allowing players that aren't as good as you to make plays and to have success. And, you know, they, you know, Arizona has been a house of horrors for Dallas Cowboys. Don't get me wrong. Sure. But this has got that kind of vibe to it that if you don't take care of your business, then you could be dealing with a quarterback that can play with some confidence if he gets it going, a running back that uses a backup but is capable, and you give their offensive line, let, let them block you, then you're going to be you're in, going to be in for a long day. Yeah. And that's that's when I look at this team, I I I just feel like that there's ways if you can control the quarterback's ability to scramble, to move in the pocket. You know, squeeze him, make him, make him play within the pocket. You can make him make some poor throws. Brian Jedrick Wills coming out of Alabama was like one of my favorite players. I think he yeah. was he was really good coming out of college. What what right. what the hell happened to him? Because now he seems like uh, one of the players that's going to qualify for this segment that me and you are going to do every week. We're gonna, we we going to talk about it later. Hang tight. But it it just seems like he's just not the dude that he once was. Why is Jedrick Wills so bad? I thought that uh, you know coming into this just off the names alone, right? Jedrick Wills yeah. and Jones, the right tackle. I love I love I love Dewan Jones coming out of college, Ohio State. I thought that 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 they had like two good tackles. They got yeah. one good tackle. Jedrick Wills ain't good, Brian. Like, what's what's going on, man? What happened? Now? Yeah, it's uh, there's a I could say, and Bill Callahan generally does a really good job with these offensive line. And you know, with him, there, as we've seen here in the clips you've been running, his technique has really not been very good. And you know, when he when he could set and he has that base, 
and he's able to kick for the width. Yeah. And when I mean kick for width is he gets out on you. Now, one, you'll see times where he kicks too wide yeah. and, and he'll overset and then guys come back inside. But right there, there you go. That's a, that's a, see if we can run it back right there. I know it's a, it's a sack, but the sack came from the other side, but he's in a situation right now where you watch the set. He's a little bit, he's a little bit, and, and, you know, if you look, he's a little bit tall right now. And then he, and then all of a sudden the base gets real, real wide. When that base gets really wide like that, it's hard for you to kick inside to cut that guy off. Yeah. You, you, the really good tackles can play with take that right foot, put it forward and put the left one back, but angle in a way to kind of put themselves between the, 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 you know, between the defender and the, and the quarterback, yeah. but right here, he's completely open. He can't, you know, he's trying to adjust back to the inside, but there, there are times where he is just totally, he gets overextended. Uh, they, they have a little bit, some problems with uh, some of the hand placement guys spin on him. Uh, you know, yeah, at Alabama, he didn't seem to have the issues that he's having right now with with his technique. And 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 like like I said, for a Bill Callahan coach player at the time, that seems really hard to believe because he's that good with his technique. He gets these guys to play with their hands well, their feet. They, all those things are kind of married to the way he plays. Let's see here. See, it kicks away. Okay, right there. There you go. Right there. Jeez. If you could go back, if you go back a little bit. He gets the he gets outside fine right there. Now he needs to settle. If he could if he could just punch that guy and sit down, instead he takes that hop. Yeah. But then you got Watson who really can't do anything in the middle of the pocket because there's no ability for him to step up or to slide yeah. away from that. So here he is. He's outside. So right. He's there, a little high right here. He needs to bend his knees. He's a little, a little high. Yeah. Yep. He's a little high, and then he hops. Yeah. And then once he does that hop. You know he's he, he can't sit down. That that defender just drives him straight to the straight straight to Watson right there. Mm -hmm. But you you know you you get beat up the middle like that, and that's what I was talking about a weak tackle. Make a weak tackle like that, you have a chance right there for a for a sack. And but you got to wrap him up. You make a weak tackle, weak arm tackle, and now he's out the gate on you. Uh, you know, the, good job of the the safety there to come up and and make that play. But yeah, with Wills, it's a. It's a combination of, of some things with the hands, the feet. I've seen some times where he's set very well, and you're kind of like going, okay, that's the guy I remember at Alabama. Yeah. But he's he struggled with his technique. I, I think that there's things that they have to do, like we're doing right here, and we'll see it in the end zone copy, the waggles, the boots, mm -hmm. the screens, you know, anything to kind of try and help these guys with you know with their blocks and you know having not to hold up they're gonna they're gonna send everybody one direction here you know and they're gonna run this thing going the other way but they're they're, they're trying their best see everybody going in there gonna get that flow and now here's where you have all this in joku and 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 then even amari cooper you know to the sideline right there you have these drag routes these out routes and it's to get the ball out of his hand as quickly as possible, but this this I think is going to be they're going to try. I think they're scared of Dallas. I think they're especially scared of Micah Parsons sure. rushing the passer. And the one thing that Micah Parsons said today in the locker room, and I thought was a, a kind of an interesting little point. He talked about playing a two eye or mm -hmm. playing a three eye. When we talk of two eyes and three eyes, that's inside techniques. Those are. Those are like those are like the uh, you know inside this between the center and the guard mm -hmm. outside the three of course is outside the guard. He was talking about asking Mike Zimmer. He goes, "Hey Mike, I, you know, if you want me to play six eye, that's that outside technique. When you think of a five technique, that's a head up. That's a head up tackle. That's that's an in on a head up tackle. Mm -hmm. When you play a six, you're playing outside eye. So that was one of the things I think that Dan Quinn was guilty of." Was maybe playing Micah Parsons too much in and then in that six eye yeah. or that outside technique with his hand down. Now, if they're struggling, if they're struggling at offensive tackle in this game, you know this is where Zimmer could be really could do a lot of damage. Is that if they have somebody in there playing tackle that they feel like they can wear out, Micah Parsons needs to go and attack that that spot. Yeah. You know, much like much like what. Jim Swartz is going to do when we talk about the Browns 
defense tomorrow. Mm-hmm. He is going to move Miles Garrett around and find matchups that he can win. And all of us believe that Guyton's going to get all the help. I I was talking with Mike Lombardi this this morning about this. He knows Jim Swartz very well. Worked with him in Cleveland a long time, long time friend. And I said, "Hey, Mike, how do you think he? How do you think that Swartz attacks?" And I know we'll do the defense tomorrow, but I just bring it up. Sure. He said, "He said, listen, everybody probably talking about Guyton, the rookie. Watch Steele on the other side." Yeah, and I go. That's exactly when I was looking at the tape, and I think you that. and I, you and I were talking about that. It, it's it's everybody thinks Guyton, 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 Guyton because he's the rookie. Yeah, but it's but it could be the way that Miles Garrett rushes, the way he plays with power, could be even a bigger problem for Steele. Yeah. Again, we'll talk about that tomorrow. There's a lot of different matchups, but in this game, you know the 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 Browns are compromised. They don't have their best back. Uh, they're down some offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. They don't have their offensive line coach there anymore. And they got a quarterback that hasn't played in a long time. And there's probably some rust and his ability. And Mike Zimmer will make him read. He'll make him react. And if he could keep him in the pocket and make him a thrower, they'll have a chance to they'll have a chance to have some really good success on defense in this game. Now, Brian, we have this segment on my show. And now this is our show, Brian. Right. And and it's, it's a segment, it's a movement, it's a hashtag, it's a game that we always find ourselves playing. And it's called Find the Scrub. So yeah. if we're in charge and, you know, we're, you know, game planning and all yeah. that, and we, and we write these offensive linemen up on the board, you know, James Hudson, Joel Batonio, and Ethan Postage, yeah. Wyatt Teller. Yeah. You think Jack, Jack Conklin got his job back or you think it's going to be Dewan Jones? I I think Jones. I I I know that Conklin's banged up. Conklin, Conklin, sorry, okay, Conklin, Con, sorry. Conklin, Conklin uh, Jack Conklin's got. Uh, I believe he's dealing with a knee as well. Okay, gotcha. And so they they got some struggles there. So you know we feel greater or we feel better that Mike Zimmer is going to do more of a job of moving Michael Parsons around than Dan will. than Dan Quinn did, right? He will. Yeah. Brian, in a good old game of find the scrub. Who do you think Michael Parsons is going to be lined up on the most? What scrub are we going to take advantage of? You need on to the- go back and watch. Who's our tackle? Would say Hudson. Hudson, yeah, 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 yeah. James I Hudson. think, yeah, Hudson. I, th- I think I need to take a look at Hudson. Yeah. But if you, in my initial thought of watching, I think Wyatt Teller, a guard, the right guard, mm-hmm. I think has got. I think he's got some issues. Sure. I think he's got some issues with. I think he's got some issues with power. I think he's got the issues with with movement. Yeah. Uh, I, Batonio at the left guard. Yeah. Is a mauler, kind of a tough guy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a tough guy line in a way, or they try to be tough guy line. Yeah. But I, I saw times where Posick and Teller, when there were games that were being played, when there mm-hmm. were twist games, when there were blitzes, from depth. They didn't handle that very, very well. And what's the thing that we always talk about, the best way to affect quarterbacks in the league? And we're going to say it for 18 weeks. Up the middle. Affect eye level. Eye level. Affect the eye level. Get the eyes down on the rush. The quarterbacks, the when quarterbacks are struggling, what do they do? They look at the rush. Yeah. And they feel most quarterbacks in the league can deal with stuff off the edge. Mm-hmm. It's the stuff that's right in their face. That happens really quick, and it and it affects them. And the eye level comes down. What happens if you got a guy like if you got a guy like this quarterback, you know, with this, with Watson, and he's not a particularly strong reader mm-hmm. of defenses. Yeah, his eye level comes down, and then he has to refocus where he's going with the ball. Mm-hmm. That's a problem. For him. It's a big problem. That's a problem. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking inside. We'll see how these tackles. I need to look. I need to look at uh, you're right about the kid from Ohio State. I think as a sub, as a backup player, he showed some promise. Yeah. I mean, he really, really did. But I, I kind of feel like if you're going to attack somebody, that right guard teller is the one I would go after. See, I was looking at postage. And and look, Brian, we postage we... is postage is if you if you're right. 
we laugh at you know Josh Ball all the time being oh, yeah. being being six seven playing on the inside. Yeah. Post is tall as hell, and yeah. and when you tall and long limb like that, you don't move mm. sideways really well. Oh, so yeah. I honestly think there's a lot of opportunities for a lot of these guys. I think you can yeah. move Mike all over the place and he can have yeah. a big day. Um, but I think um, you know yeah they're gonna have a backup left tackle in Hudson, but I was really hoping that we got a chance to go against Wills because Wills, yeah, Wills. Sure Wills Yep. Yeah, Will Will's probably don't like he don't like Watson too much. Um, yep. two more things, Brian. Yeah. Two more things. Uh, who do you think is gonna be the main Deshaun Watson spy guy? You know, is is that gonna be Lewafow? You know, he's a he's a he's a he's a madman type character, chase guys around. Is it gonna be yep. Overshawn? We've seen him do that a lot in college. Um, is it gonna be Clark? You know, he's your he's your he's your most athletic. Uh which one of these linebackers do you think is, is probably gonna be tasked to chase Watson around, Brian? My my gut feeling is that I don't know if they would give the responsibility to the rookie. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of where I'm looking at. You know, the, the the good blitzer, when you when you start to talk, Kendricks can really blitz, you know, and he's a guy that can attack. We've seen him attack. I watched him in training camp attack the Rams and have success. But he also tackles really well in space and he covers well. Yeah. And I wonder, I wonder how they're gonna play in Joku. Mm-hmm. Does okay, and I think you got to mix coverages on him. Sure. And I wonder if you're going to see Izzy Mukwamu. Yep. I wonder if you're going to see Izzy Mukwamu, who is a longer, yep. but but the but in Joku's best plays are flat plays, yeah. balls that go in the flat. That's where he does a lot of his damage. The screens, he could be devastating on the screens. And I know you asked me the questions about spy, but I'm trying to get there by describing Please. what else I need to do. I'm trying to eliminate guys that are going to. But when you watch in Joku, the screens the flats, the delayed screens, it's block, block, and then leak. And if you, you know, when you have time to do that, it, it could be devastating. We've seen the Philadelphia Eagles do it for years, you know, with the, with Dallas Goddard and, and all those guys, you know, every tight end, it seemed like that, that, that Eagles ever had were able to run a screen and they always hurt Dallas that way. I think you're going to have to mix coverages on in Joku. That would leave me, I think to me, I would, I would think I would put Kendricks on him as that spot because I think Kendricks has the speed. I think Kendricks has the. I think Kendricks has the word. What you worry about? Say you put Clark in there. Clark's eyes lose focus at times, and and I mean, like, what is he seeing? You know, is he seeing the is he seeing the right thing? here and so give me somebody that has the awareness is going to stay on task is not going to get distracted you know overshone we talked about his health it seems like everything's good on that uh so i i kind of feel like though it, it's going to be kendrick's that's going to be the guy that's going to be in that middle kind of playing like that rover position because he will fight through trash he will if 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 Watson breaks, he'll step up like the Pittsburgh guy, step up and make a tackle and be pretty sure about it. Yeah. Um, do you have any concerns about Kalen Carson going out there against two uh, you know, you know, top tier route runners and Cooper yeah. and you know, Judy. Ju- you, you know, Judy as as much as his Denver days probably you know, probably didn't go the way that you would probably expect it. But mm-hmm. coming out of Alabama, he was a top tier route runner and, and there's there's probably some talent left over in there still. Uh do you do you think that, you know, either one of those guys give Caitlin Carson a hard time? Yeah, you know, I, I think with Carson, the one thing that he will he'll be ready, um, and I wonder I wonder if they, if the Browns, okay, let me ask you this question then. Yes, sir. You know, this Dallas secondary, you haven't seen Carson play a whole hell of a lot, Mm -hmm. but you have a little bit of an understanding of what he is. You have a little bit of an understanding. Yes, sir. If you're Kevin Stefanski, are you attacking the rookie? Or are you looking at, give me Amari Cooper in the slot, in space with all that field to work with 
against Jordan Lewis. And let's and let's not let's not let's not uh, let's not forget Diggs. Sure. You know, Diggs is coming off this injury and stuff like that. I sure. mean, it's just not losing Bland. It's Diggs coming off an injury. We haven't talked a lot about Diggs. Yeah. Now, this is his first game back in a long time. I mean, he played the scrimmage practice games against the Rams. But this, you know, this, this is going to be a challenge for him too. But I wonder if you're the if you're the Browns and you watch the Dallas tape, do you want to attack Jordan Lewis with all that space to work with, with Amari Cooper, or do you want to put him on the outside against Carson and let him just try and run by Carson and run him on the comebacks and the outs, you know, those types of plays. So let me set this up by saying this, Brian. We had this uh, this uh, joke going around, you know, me and my audience members, right? Mm -hmm. If this game would have been in Dallas, Cooper would have done nothing because he's bad on the road, right? You know what I'm right. saying? If it was in Dallas. But they're at home, so Amari Cooper's probably going to have 130-some yards they pass, right. you know, just, just catching the football and running. So you just got to figure out where would you want those 130-some-odd yards to be. Right. Um, I don't think – your corners get beat on the easy double moves like they like like they used to. And I think Cooper can hit you with some of those, right? Yeah, um, sure can. And even when Cooper was here, I felt like he would be the best slot receiver in the league because of him and his route running and just flashing right. his hands and just getting getting open like that. And right. I wonder if the Cowboys putting so much pressure on Watson, I wonder if that's something that the Browns can can go to, just moving Cooper yeah. closer to him so that Watson can maybe get rid of the ball quicker or something like yeah. that. Uh, but if it's me, um, maybe early in the game, I'm testing Diggs' knee. If it's right. me. Yeah. 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 The one thing, the one thing that, the one thing that, that when we, we, when we all understand Amari Cooper, the type of player he is, yeah. the posts, the corners, the goes, those are all really good routes for him. Yeah. And, and the closer you get him to the sidelines, the better he is catching the ball. It's catch, tap, tap, mm -hmm. catch, tap, tap. You know, he's one of those guys. Yeah. So I, I kind of feel like that they're going to test the one thing that Watson can do is he could throw the ball. I mean, he could, he's got arm talent. Yeah. I mean, I watched him in that Tennessee game. He's standing on right hash ball, throwing an out all the way to the left. And it was a rope. Mm -hmm. So he's got that ability to throw that type of ball and they might test. They might see it on tape with Carson, you know, some of the things about, do they feel like he's got the deep speed to keep up? So you might see Judy or, you know, or more one of these guys running down the field and see if, if he can keep up, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I like, you know, when, when you're talking about digs, I think that I, I just, I look at him and I feel like, okay, if you had to say, is Carson the weakest of the three corners that are on the field? You would have to say so. Yeah. Just because of lack of experience or you just don't know. We just we just haven't seen him. We have no idea what's yeah. going on with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, say Bland was playing. Mm -hmm. If Bland was playing, I'm maybe still trying Trey because he's coming out the ACL. I think okay. I think Jordan Lewis was your best corner last year. Okay, like towards the end of the year or whatever. I think Jordan. Oh, Lewis. Yeah. Was, I, I, yeah. No disrespect to Jordan Lewis. I sure. just wonder if they would look at him and say. You know, and, maybe and, they would. And, maybe they would, though, Brad. Like, like yeah. maybe outside looking, like we as Cowboy fans know how yeah. Lewis gets down. But maybe outside looking in, maybe they want to try Lewis, and yeah. and that may be to our benefit or something. You yeah. Know, I don't know. yeah. Well, that would be. I I think the digs. I think your digs. I think your digs thought is actually a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that's something you have to you have to consider that they're going to say, well, okay, well, how good is your knee? Mm -hmm. How good is how good is your knee? Or and you know, do you throw? inside breaking routes on him and stuff and test him that way. They're, they're Both these corners, I think, well, actually all three of these corners are going to get tested. The question is, can the, the can Watson find time and will he be accurate enough if, in fact, that these guys, the tight window throws could be a problem for him, yeah. but he, he can miss open throws too. You know, it's, it's, it's always a possibility with him. 
Is there anybody else on this offense that kind of, you know, keeps you up at night a little bit? You know, they uh, they got Elijah Moore. He was a guy with the yeah. Jets that was kind of fighting for his yeah. respect. But he was a player that would do well if they would throw him the football. They just didn't throw him the football, Brian. You think yeah. he has a he has any any problems for us? Yeah, I you know, like I say, the the the, the unknown is the unknown really is Judy. You know, yeah. could, Judy. I mean, at one point in time, there were Judy. You know, would make plays. You know, and you you wonder. I I do think Cooper's going to get his. Yeah. yeah. I like you said though. I think you need to limit the damage, mm-hmm. and if he has a hundred yard game, you hope the final score is twenty four to thirteen. Yeah. Or something like that. You know. But oh, Cooper had a hundred and thirty yards. Oh, he played well, but he did nothing other. But you know, he did nothing but between the twenties. Sure. You know, and so that's kind of your hope. Um, I just, I do worry, I do worry about Njoku because I don't know how that matchup is going to go. Sure. And and we've seen Izzy, we've seen Izzy take some big guys and cover. I, I think you almost have to treat him because his ability, it's just, it can be short throws. Yeah. He's be, a yak yeah guy. He's a yak yeah guy. Yeah. It's easy throws. It's, it's, it's something where Deshaun Watson doesn't have to really work very hard. It's, it's, it's get outside, then all of a sudden, oh, there's Njoku. Oh, no, nobody, everybody overflowed, uh, uh, over pursued the play. Now they're throwing the ball back, and you know, and how many of those are you going to get in this game? Yeah. How many screens are you going to get? I mean, he he could be the leading receiver in this game just because of the simplicity of the throws. You know, just trying to make sure that they need to get the ball out because they do not need to get Watson killed by Micah Parsons screaming off the edge. Let me ask you a question if I could, buddy. Yes, sir. Thanks. Where are these sacks going to come from? Where are these sacks going to come from with the Cowboys? I I, I had a uh I had a thought today on the radio because I was asked about, you know, with Micah. I'll tell you. We know Micah's gonna get sacks. You mm-hmm. know, we we understand that. Where are the other sacks coming from? I think or the other pressures. I think Overshawn can get some. I mm-hmm. think Donovan Wilson can get something for you. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think Marshawn Nealon from the inside can get something for you. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping that maybe with some Zimmer magic, D-Log can get back on his horse and give you something. Like, he doesn't have to be a double-digit sack guy anymore. Like, that's not his 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 game anymore. Right. But hopefully D-Log can give you something. But, Brian, something that'll make me extremely happy, that'll make mm-hmm. me one smiling character coming back on the We Doing All Right podcast, I would love for Oso Digizua to do something big guy. Yeah. Yeah, I would love I, him to get some sacks from Bega. Yeah, I'd lo- I I see exactly because the question I had, uh, or the answer that I gave, Osa was a thought, and then I said, you know, these sacks are probably going to come from linebackers. Sure, depending on where you think of Micah Parsons, if you think of him as a linebacker, you think of him as an edge. But, mm-hmm. but the these linebackers, whether it's Overshown, Clark, Kendricks, I like what you're talking about. With there's going to be some slot blitz. Sure. There's going to be some safety blitz. Um, you know, they're going to need, they're going to need, if it's not Tank and it's not Osa, mm-hmm. it's going to have to probably come from these linebackers. And, you know, and I think with Nealon, I think Nealon can get there. I just don't know if it's going to be, if it's six or seven sacks, my gosh, throw a parade in downtown Dallas. Yeah. But if it's, you know, if it's one of those things where he goes four or five, six, seven games without a sack, mm-hmm. That's kind of some of the stuff we saw at Eastern Michigan. Sure. Or Western Michigan, excuse me, not Eastern. Western Michigan. Is one of them, Brian. Yeah, one yeah, of the Michigan. Directional yeah. Michigan, Western mm-hmm. Michigan. Mm-hmm. But I I think if it's not if it's if it's Parsons, we know it will be. But I think it's gonna have to come from some of these other linebackers. Yeah. I think some of these other linebackers are gonna have to play big and maybe a safety is gonna have to play big. And maybe a slot corner is going to have to play big on some of those blitzes like we used to see from Orlando Scandrick, mm-hmm. where he was able to get some sacks playing that way. I think I think Demo would love to walk down, and he would love to chase people around and get sacks. Overshawn yeah. would love to do it. And yeah, honestly, I, him, like his whole draft profile or whatever, mm-hmm. pass rush was a part of his draft profile right. he's a long dude that right. you know he's relentless and he's not small anymore he's he's put right. on some decent weight i think overshawn right. can get you some um but i you know we we 
to be fair, that's fantastic. That's a fantastic question because we don't have the the same pass rush juice now that yeah. you know Fowler and Armstrong are not here. So that's fair. Yeah, I just wonder because it's 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 going to turn into there's going to be some questions, and all of a sudden, if you've got quarterbacks that are looking pretty comfortable throwing the football, and it's going to be a lot of it's going to be put on Micah Parsons. But where are the others? I I love what you said about Oso Digizua. Yeah, I love that, and you know I need Osa to not be a college player this year. Yeah, you know to play the thirteen game schedule. I need him to play. You know I need him to play more than thirteen games. I need him to be week fourteen, week fifteen, week sixteen. I need him to be one of those guys that you know he's getting pressures. He's getting you know he's getting sacks. You know, it'd be nice if he had that that kind of that breakout year that we've all kind of talked about for him. But they're going to need – they're going to need somebody other than Parsons for sure. Just hopefully that – and Zimmer will be able to scheme him the right way to, to make sure that it's not – oh, well, the Cowboys have gone four games without a sack. Yeah. I think that's hard to believe with Micah Parsons on the team. But mm-hmm. we've seen at the end of the year, you know, he's gone some games where he didn't have some sacks. Well, damn, Sandy, we're going to find out at 3.30, uh, 3.05 Central Time. We're, we're definitely going to see. 3.25, I think. Am I working until th- – I think I'm, I think I got my pregame show until 3.25. What are, you, what are you trying to do? You're trying to start the game early? Is that what you're trying to Brian, do? Brian, I just work until they tell me the game on, and then when the game go off, I just work until I get sleeping. That's just what we do, man. We line up and we fight. You feel gotcha, me? Gotcha, man. Gotcha. I, I appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. Tomorrow we're going to break down the Browns' defense and talk about yeah. how scary they are. Them dude, like, yeah, we, we was laughing at the Browns' offense today, but, boy, tomorrow that Browns' defense is, is going to be a heavyweight fight with this Cowboys' offense. It will, be, it will be a heavyweight fight, no doubt about that. And we're going to break that down for you. Hey, tap in to Vice Lombardi on Twitter because I'm talking now and t- tap in to BRY in bras. Brian, how come I wake up at 6 in the morning? You were up at like 5.30 reading comments, man. Quit reading comments at 5.30 in the morning. I, you know what? I was, uh, I just want to be really fair right now and I love the comments. I love to answer the questions, but somebody got on me for that thing right there. Oh, the Eagles thing? Oh, the pennant. Yeah, they're like, you know, how the hell can you do that? Well, if you notice, I got a Cowboy pin it here, Eagles pin it here, Giants pin it here. Now, I had a collection of pennants when I was a kid. I used mm. to go to Texas Stadium, and every game, my mom or dad would buy me a dollar pennant. Mm. And that's, I, I have a collection of every NFL team from the 70s. And I, you know, so this is my backdrop. I'm not, you know, I, I did work with the Eagles. So, you know, I do have a little there, but. That's just my backdrop. It's football. That's what we're talking about. It's football. Brian, just, Brian right. has thousands of dollars of, of memorabilia up on his wall, and he hadn't gotten into praise yet. So, hey, shots out to him. Look at that guy. Look at that How guy. That one? How about that? How about that young guy with that Super Bowl trophy right there, huh? I'd be damn. Look I look, I look better now than I did then. My gosh, what was I doing? Look at them glasses, look. man. You, you, you know, you got a little swag now. You like yeah. you, 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 you wear ninety years old, but how old are you? Like ninety something. I was, I'm 60, oh, my but bad. back then well, that was, I was 30, 34, 35 years old. So yeah, it's a long time. That last, dude, time that Cowboys, dude. last time the Cowboys got one of those, it was, I got it the year after the Cowboys got theirs. That so dude, that's how long it's been. Brian, that dude's two years older than me. Yeah. That's crazy, man. I yeah. take care of my skin, man. I, I'm looking, I just, I'm just geez. telling you, man, it was, uh, it was rough in the NFL back then, man. We were fighting. We were fighting for these Cowboys were making me fight for stuff. I, you know? ain't, I ain't fighting nobody. I'm keeping us safe out here. You hear me, Brian, bro? We safe a week. I ain't fighting nobody. Out here. Hey, you thank you for all the comments. <laughs> if you do hate me, just tell me and I'll answer your comments. I, I, I do. I, I like to, if, if you have a problem with me, don't have a problem with Vach. Have a problem with me. If you're going to have a problem. Oh, what do you, what huh? you, yeah, what you, well, you chose violence today, didn't you? No, you chose violence. No. You chose violence is what you did. No, never. Hey, man, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. Y'all tap in with us tomorrow. We're doing all right. Crown.